Hello viewers, welcome to Elim TV, a station where you watch, interact and also learn. Your teacher today is Mr. Wanyoike, an agriculture teacher. In today's lesson, we are in Form 4, Lesson 12. And the topic is poultry production. And the subtopic is routine management practices in poultry. On to the lesson objectives. Uh, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the various routine management practices in poultry. Uh, number two, uh, methods used in identifying a good uh, layer. Uh, the routine management practices in poultry include number one, feeding, and number two, control of diseases. And, and um, the disease that you are supposed to control, uh, you are supposed to control uh, Gumboro, then we have Newcastle, and uh, you have uh, fall typhoid. And number three, we have control of parasite using appropriate method. You can do dusting. Also, you can use a dust bath and as uh, the dust bath uh, dusting uh, and also the warmers so that you can uh, get rid of the worms. Then uh, we'll go to the control of parasite. And the control of parasite, you have the dusting, as I've said. Then we have the warmers. And the number of, number four, we'll go to egg collection. That is another control management practice that is supposed to be carried out uh, during poultry production. You're supposed to regularly control the uh, to collect the egg so that you can control the vices of egg eating. Then the perpetual uh, egg eater and the perpetual cannibals are supposed to be uh, debiked. Uh, this is the process as I explained in the previous lesson of cutting short the uh, some section of the upper uh, peak to control the egg eating vice and also cannibalism. Culling is on also another one and uh, we'll go to the characteristic for birds to be culled. What are the characteristics, what are the traits are we supposed to check so that we can know that this bird is supposed to be culled and this, is, uh, this bird is supposed to be left to continue with the production. Uh, the first one, poor growth. Those birds which have poor growth should be culled out. Then number two, chronic disease. Then number three, old age. Those birds which are old of age, uh, they are supposed to be culled uh, by selling them. You sell them or you slaughter them uh, because they have uh, less level of production. They normally lay few eggs and also the body weight is also uh, very, very small. So they, it is uneconomical because they are feeding a lot but uh, they don't uh, produce a lot of uh, uh, eggs. Then poultry uh, vices, uh, that is also uh, the eggs which are the, the poultry which normally feed on egg, egg eaters and also the cannibals are supposed to be culled out. Then you have the poor layer. Uh, how do we know a poor layer and a good layer? How do we differentiate? A poor layer is the one that allows only one egg in between the pelvic bone. Uh, well, a good layer should allow two to three fingers. And that, that, that is it. Then methods used to identify good layer and poor layer, as uh, you can see, the first one is observation of physical trait of the bird. Uh, uh, for example, the, the beak, those which have yellow beak are uh, poor layers and therefore they are supposed to be uh, eliminated. Then we have trap nesting method. Um, in trap nest nesting method, uh, you can uh, identify uh, which bird is a good and uh, which bird uh, is bad. In a uh, trap nesting method, uh, you put a, a nest where the bird goes to ray and upon laying it is trapped there and therefore you mark it then you remove it. Then next time another bird is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is trapped and marked. And uh, after several uh, occasions, you'll find that there are a few birds which will remain unmarked, meaning that those birds which will not have any mark, meaning that they are all poor layers uh, or they don't have uh, eggs. Uh, then characteristic of a good layer, we have combs and uh, are large, warm, waxy and red. Number two, eyes are bright, orange, and the bird is very very alert then number three uh, vent is oval moist red and active and number uh, four temperament they are alert and active then bix is pale and uh, six a space between the keel and the pelvic gino, uh, 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 pelvic bone or guido should allow two to three fingers uh, then broodiness is rare 
For those good layers, uh, they really come broody. Then we have the space between the pelvic guido, you can see in the diagram uh, there. Uh, for a good layer, there is a wider space, and for a, uh, for a non layer, the, there is a smaller space. And also, you uh, can see the finger, uh, one finger uh, that is for a non layer, the, the non uh, layer. Then we have three fingers uh, for a good uh, layer. Then the three fingers are supposed to fit exactly in between that space. Uh, then uh, we go to the images of Combs and Watus uh, for a good layer. You can see these are good layers. Uh, then we have color of chunks. Uh, you can see this one. Uh, the chunks are, are red uh, for a good layer and those that are yellow is for a poor or non layer. Then uh, non uh, broody and broody hen. You can see uh, non broody the appearance of uh, non broody and the broody uh, you can see it in the second image and uh, you can see even in that image we have a broody hen there and then uh, this is a continuation of good layers you can see uh, them the diagrams and we have come come, come to the end of the, today's lesson and the following questions are supposed to be answered by you number one explain any two methods used to uh, identify a good layer and number two discuss the routine mundane bed practices in a pottery uh, for reference you can refer from secondary agriculture students book four and the publisher is the kenya literature bureau for more information you can contact us through the following uh, addresses as well illustrated and displayed for you Thank you for joining me in today's lesson. Uh, till next lesson, bye-bye.